You know, I like to go and walk through graveyards, especially graveyards like this one that have so many old gravestones and people who passed away 100, 150, 200 years ago. But if we're not careful, it can just become sort of a, like a historical artifact, not really understanding and reminding ourselves that these were all people that people loved and cared for. In fact, uh, I'm reminded of that, this one here uh, to, to my left. Someone took the time to put rest mother in quiet sleep while friends in sorrow or the weep. I'm reminded that people came back here and looked at this grave and lived in the weeping and the mourning and the grief. The life for the Christian when dealing with death is one that I th I'd like to focus briefly on today because we need to be reminded that life lived in the Christian church and lived out in faith is a way to conquer, is a way to deal with death and grief and mourning. I would like to draw our attention. Let's, let's, let's look at John chapter 11, verses, uh, beginning in verse 32. This is where Jesus uh, has come to the place of Mary and Martha and his friend Lazarus who's died. He's greeted with sort of an accusation by Mary. Lord, if you'd been there, my brother would not have died. Jesus saw him, her weeping, and the Jews who come along with him also. Where have you laid him? He said. Come and see, they replied. And it says Jesus wept. It's a deep it's a deep weeping, a deep mourning. God grieves, Jesus grieves, and that means that we will grieve, and that's appropriate. That's only right. So what are some things that we can be mindful of as Christians when we deal with grief, which is what happens, it's an event, it's a loss, and mourning, which is the framework of dealing with the grief. One, uh, we need to be able to admit that we're grieving. Grief is a result of loss. But without love, you grieve over those things you love. You mourn over those things you love. You go through life and not mourn and not grieve. But I think that's a far worse fate than opening yourself up to grief because your heart begins, begins to be smaller and smaller and more and more brittle. Mourning, then, is the framework of dealing with loss. So what are some other things we can think about that might help us? One, focus on daily gratitude. The great writer and preacher John Claypool talked about after the death of his daughter, Laura Lou. He said at some point, though, he began to try to be thankful for all the things around him. And he began to be thankful for the life that he had with Laura Lou. It didn't take away all the hurt, but it began to diminish it and begin to help him to focus ahead where he knew God would someday, uh, he, he would be grateful and God would, uh, would give him in grace and mercy. Also, we need to be reminded that people grieve in different ways. Some people cry, some people uh, keep quiet, but there may be uh, a different way that you grieve than someone else, but you need to be humble about it. The next thing I want us to think about today is service, service to others. That may be the last thing you think of when you're going through a difficult time. But Jesus said it's better to give than receive. And if we think about the Good Samaritan, we think about how he bound the wounds of that one that was hurt. Listen, sometimes in a mysterious way, God can help to bind your wounds because you serve and you help others. If you're going through grief, if you're going through mourning today, God bless you. Remember, God loves you. He cares for you. Find a place, a good church where you can go, where people can surround you and love you. I hope that you can do that, and I hope that you can find peace. God bless you, and I sure hope to see you soon.